What's going on guys, Andrew Pillock Hockey here back with another video. Thank you guys so much for the support lately. Today we're going to be looking at the NHL offer sheets. Now a lot of people think of this and go, oh well this is never, never going to happen. And then there's a group of people that think, oh man, this is the summer of the offer sheet. Now basically what it means is, to just to simplify it, there's restricted free agents and there's unrestricted free agents. Unrestricted free agents are free to just go and talk and whatever and sign to whatever team they want to. They they aren't owned by their team anymore. But restricted free agent means that usually up until July 1st throughout the year, whatever, uh, you have you're you're a part of a team. Like you're you're a part of an organization. So like Mitch Marner, of course, that's the one that's been talked a lot. Mitch Marner's still a member, you know, of the Toronto Maple Leafs. His rights are owned by the Toronto Maple Leafs, but they can still receive offer sheets from other teams and if an offer sheet comes in and Mitch Marner says yeah I'll sign that then the Leafs have you know they have to match it or else Marner's going to that other team and they have to give up the compensation which we will get to in a little bit because this is something that I've kind of talked about briefly a little bit but Luke Fox put out a really good article in Sportsnet that I kind of want to dissect and kind of give my own thoughts on because if you do look on the channel I've talked about it before because uh, it's something that a lot of people are really interested in and maybe a little bit confused about so um, there haven't been a lot of offer sheets it's and again like he Luke Fox even talks about it in here he said it's as common as spotting Bigfoot riding Haley's Comet to the lost city of Atlantis so basically it's something that just never happens but um, there, there's a couple of options or options, um, examples here that have happened in the past because we haven't seen one since Calgary dangled 10 million over two years in an attempt to lure Ryan O'Reilly away from Colorado. The Avalanche matched it uh, as nine of the past 10 offer sheets uh, sheeted clubs have. So they usually get, uh, it, you know, matched and there's n nobody moves. Uh, so, uh, in fact, only one offer sheet in the past 22 years was accepted. Dustin Penner moved from Anaheim to Edmonton in the summer of 2007 for $21.5 million. And Brian Burke famously challenged Kevin Lowe to a barn duel in the process. So, yeah, there's <laughs> it's not really the greatest thing. So uh, I want to get some things out of the way right at the beginning of the video because you're going to hear a little bit about it but just to let people know offer sheets can happen like we're not going to sit here and say it's impossible as we've just heard the advance or the options or examples whatever it's it's happened before it can happen again is it likely no and the reason why i'm saying that is because and especially for big name guys teams Yes, they can offer sheet. They can they can pick up a big name player. Like let's say it's Miko Rantanen or uh, it's Sebastian Ajo. Like I'm just saying those names because there are a phase and we'll get to it. But you're signing them to a massive contract, and let's say it's ten to eleven million bucks. Like they really want to pry them away from their team and put that team for force that other team to match it if they sign. Um, you're mortgaging your cap because you're spending all that money on one player but you're also giving up four first round picks and that's when we'll get to the compensation so not a ton of teams are willing to do that so before we go ahead and say all these big guys are going to get uh, offer sheeted it could be a second tier guy and like I said we'll get to that so um, Kyle Dubas has famously said already that uh, he would match an offer sheet and I think a lot of NHL GMs want to do that. It, and NHL GMs, if, if you don't believe they're talking all the time, they definitely are and you can definitely ruin a relationship between GMs uh, by doing that or you might even ruin a little bit of a reputation around the league if you go out there and you're trying stuff like that. Some people care. But you, you have to remember, when you need to make a trade or if you need to make a move, every team needs to, you need to have every team as a possibility. You need to be able to, to trade with Colorado, to trade with Ottawa, to trade with San Jose. You need to have relationships with people in those organizations. You need to have all those options available to you. So if you really, if, if you piss somebody off, piss another team off by continually trying to mess with their cap situation, whatever, like that's part of it. Like, whatever, that's cool. But you're probably going to burn some bridges, and that's something that's even being put in here. So let's look at the offer sheet compensation. So this is official. This is the compensation. So if a player um, is given a, an offer sheet of 0 to $1.3 million, there's, there's no compensation there because most teams are going to match that anyways. One mil, uh, $1.3 million to uh, $2.1 million is a third-round pick. Again, you're probably going to match that and... 
whatever. Like, it's not a big deal. This is where it could get a little interesting. 2.1 million to 4.2 million is a second round pick. So if you go to a mid, mid-level mid uh, pro uh, or up-and-coming star and say, hey, listen, you know, this is the money that we're going to offer you and maybe that, that team is strapped a little bit and they, they can't afford to pay a second-tier guy $4 million, you're only giving up a second-round pick. Like people have given the example of a guy like Kasperi Kapanen. I'm going to knock him out. I don't want that to happen, but it's very possible. If a team comes with that money and the Leafs say we can't afford that, that's a second round pick that Toronto gets, but that that team gets capping in for a second. That's pretty good. The next one is 4.2 million to 6.3 million. That's a first round pick and a third round pick. Again, pretty steep, but it depends on what player. And usually, if a if a player is worth that much, a team's likely going to match that. Uh, 6.3 million to 8.4 million is a first round pick, a second, and a third. Again, it depends on what team you're offering it up to, but we're. I, when you get to the higher dollar amounts, it gets even harder to see a team doing that. This is uh, part of the big one, 8.4 to 10.5 uh, million. Two first round picks, one second, and a third round pick. Again, the price is getting very steep. You're mortgaging your cap and uh, your future because you're giving up a lot of picks. Uh, and then the last one is 10.5 million and up is four first round picks. So that is 100%. You're giving all basically a, bu a bunch of your money to one player and you're giving up four first round picks. And I'm seeing a lot of people saying, well, you know, teams don't care about, some teams don't care about those picks. They have a bunch of picks and um, a bunch of cap space. Well, here's the thing with those teams. Some, of the, Most of the time, those teams aren't very good. So let's say all of a sudden... Again, hypothetical. I haven't looked deep into which teams have which picks or whatever. Let's just say a team like Ottawa comes up and offer sheets for Rantanen. Okay, they give him ten point or you know ten point six million dollars. He signs it. Colorado doesn't want to match. Colorado gets those four first round picks. Ottawa's probably not getting dragged to the playoffs with just Rantanen. Like it's probably and e even if he has a, a little bit of a supporting cast. Y like you're not dragging a team in, into the playoffs with just Rantanen. So now you've tied a lot of money into one guy, taken up probably half of your cap space that you have available. Again, it could go up, they can get more cap space, they can move players out, sure. But now you've given up four first round picks. Like you're, you're giving up part of your future, like a good amount of your future. Because what happens if all of a sudden Ottawa falls into the lottery for two of those two of those years? Well, that's two picks that you could have had to surround you know r other players on your team to build on that and now you're giving a, a strong team like Colorado uh two first or four first round picks and two of them are lottery picks so you're just helping them out they could move those picks for other players or they could keep those cheaper guys around so again this is just hypothetical I'm not saying something like that would happen but that's just some of the options so um, they have an, an example here, sorry for the noise in the background, they have an example here of Jeff Gordon uh, from the New York Rangers. He wants to make a splash this summer. He's traded away uh, one of his seconds though, so he, he can't make an offer sheet uh, for anybody from the $6.34 million to the $10.5 million range. So he's got to focus on unrestricted free agents. So teams that are rebuilding, some of them still don't have those picks. Uh, so it also states here the the Sabres Avalanche Blue Jackets Stars Caps Penguins and Sharks all find themselves in a similar boat uh, because offer sheet compensation rules do not permit multiple same first uh, same round picks for first uh, to be pushed a year to the future. All 31 teams are eligible for the monster offer sheet of a 10.5 million dollar AAV for up to seven years. So if we're being generous, this is what it says: uh, candidates for such riches include Tampa Bay's Braden Point. Carolina's Sebastian Ajo, Toronto's Mitch Marner, uh, Colorado's Miko Rantanen, Boston's Charlie McAvoy, Columbus's Zach Wierenski, and Winnipeg's Patrick Laine and Kyle Connor. So here's the thing. People are like, oh, those guys can get the big offer sheet for the four first-round picks. So let's look at it this way. This is something that I brought up before, and it's just right here, and it's a beautiful sentence. It says, it's arguable that none of those emerging superstars are worth more than Patrick Kane money, let alone $10.5 million plus four first rounders. So you're, you're betting on one player to carry your team for the future by giving up four first round picks, by giving up all that money, and now you have to make the argument that you're paying this, this guy more money than the, the top paid players in the entire league. That list of guys there are fantastic players, point. 
Aho, uh, Ranton and Marner, Wierenski, McAvoy, Line, Connor, all these guys are amazing players. But can you justify giving them that much money? Like it and giving up four first. Like you're not just paying, you're also giving up four first. Or you could turn you could turn to a second tier of those guys. They say a lower tier offer sheet is more likely, which I would agree with. It says you can go after Kapanen, you can go after Janssen, Andrew Kopp, maybe Sam Bennett. Although I don't think that you, when you start to get to these names, some of them maybe won't be uh, available uh, for an offer sheet because you might not want to give up too much. They have Jacob Verana here, Kevin LeBlanc. But again, you, you can pay that price for these second tier guys because it's a little bit more realistic. You don't have to mortgage your future that much. Um... Again, it it doesn't make a lot of sense. So, uh, it, it also says here, eliminate Ottawa too because the rebuilding, budget-conscious Senators can't afford to spend all these draft picks because they are they aren't willing to spend to the cap this season anyway. So, teams that are rebuilding and owners, you got to remember, it's not just the GM's thoughts. The owners will come in and be like, hey, listen, I don't feel like we should be doing this. Like, why, why, are, we, why are we spending all this money giving up our future? Like, how are we supposed to build around this guy? He does. We don't have the money to give out an offer sheet and give up all these picks because we're not going to contend. What do I tell the season ticket holders for the next four years? There's no young guys coming in. You have to keep, like, there's a billion reasons why people won't make an, do an offer sheet. And again, I'm not saying it's impossible, but these reasons are 100% against it. So uh, there's, there, there's another uh, list here that says there's a cluster of teams like St. Louis, Washington, Pittsburgh, Vegas, Nashville, Anaheim, Minnesota, who find themselves in cap hell and need to re uh, relieve some of that pressure before they consider adding. So we've been going through teams and teams and teams. It could leave a handful of teams that might be able to, to do something like this. Some of the teams that might consider an offer sheet, the Islanders, the Red Wings, the Canadians, the Devils, the Hurricanes, the Coyotes, the Sabres. So a bunch of those guys have the picks, some of the picks that are available. I'm not saying all of them. Like you, Some teams might not be able to do the big offer sheets. Some teams might be able to do the middle ones. Regardless, the list of those teams, like I said, I'll say them again. The Islanders, Red Wings, Canadians, Devils, Hurricanes, Coyotes, and Sabres. They might be thinking about it, but if we look at this list, the Sabres, do you really think that they would want to do that? Jack Eichel's already mad about some of the things they've been doing. Do you think that maybe he would want to bring in a big-name guy like that and give up all those picks, and what happens if the team doesn't make the playoffs again? Then he doesn't have a young guy coming in. But Buffalo, whatever, we'll have to see. The Coyotes... I don't think that would make any sense unless they brought in a couple stars. Like it says here that they've been looking into Phil Kessel trade rumors. They probably could acquire Kessel for less than it would cost cap wise and picks wise to acquire him. Of course, you're going to have to give up big pieces for him, but it's not giving up a, a huge chunk of money and mortgaging your future. Uh, Carolina Hurricanes. Who knows? They've had a good run, but I would think that they wouldn't want to do that. They re they have to re-sign Sebastian Ajo as well. They they've got to make sure they've got their goaltending situation locked in. Uh, I don't know about them. The Devils, maybe. I don't know. They've got a lot of cap space, but they've got they've got some big names to to uh, keep around too. They've got Taylor Hall that they're they're going to want to be able to pay all the money that they need for him. They've got a lottery pick this year, so. That that could help them not want to do something like that because they've already got some of the future coming in. Uh, Pavel Zaka, Will Butcher, those guys need raises. So uh, Montreal, again, Detroit. I'm not going to go through all of them, but you can see the pattern here. It, it's going to be a lot of thinking for, for people like that. So some of the most notable RFAs this year that could be offer sheeted. Uh, like I said, Braden Point, we got Mitch Marner, Sebastian Aho, uh, we've got Miko Rantanen on here, Matthew Kachuk. I haven't heard a lot of talk about that, but Timo Meyer, that's another guy that possibly, like a lot of these teams, they they have some cap problems, but uh, Brock Besser, can't see him leaving. Charlie McAvoy, can't see him leaving. Truba, that's a big one. Our team's going to trade for him or maybe try to make do an offer sheet. Uh, Kyle Connor. Patrick Laine, some of these names we've already said. William Carlson, I'd imagine that he wouldn't get offer sheeted. Jordan Binnington, Zach Wierenski, and uh, David Riddich is on this list. And then they've got a bunch of other ones like Fiala, uh, Konechny, Sanheim, Janssen, Provorov. Like, there's a really big list of RFAs this year. So some of the second-tier guys, maybe they're going to be offer sheeted. But I can't see any of these big-name guys um, wanting to leave and maybe a team sacrificing it. So... 
Again, lots of things in the way. I know this is a bunch of information, but it's something that I wanted to talk about for a while. So you've got GM reputation that's on there, maybe the least important, but still, to a lot of people, it means something. You've got the fact that the player that's given the offer sheet, if they don't sign it, then all that's out of the window. So, like, if somebody comes to Mitch Marner and he says, I love Toronto, I'm not signing it, well, then that's it. That's all the whatever same thing with Kachuk hey man I'm chilling here in Calgary like why why I'm not gonna sign this I'm I'm playing real well with my team we did you see how good of a season we had like he's not he's not gonna want to go anywhere so if there's a lot of things standing in the way but I want to know down below what's gonna happen Do you guys think an offer sheet is possible will it happen again leave your comments down below thank you guys so much for sitting through this really long video where I ramble and talk about offer sheets if you're new, make sure to subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. Join the squad. Let's get to 6,000 subscribers. Thank you again. And uh, make sure to click notification bells. Like, share if you'd like. And I'm talking too much. So I'll see you guys in the next video or stream. Peace.